Greetings, my fellow cavern dwellers. Radamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Dwarf Fortress Taming the Wilds. Episode 4, Tapping a Well. So we're still waiting on the uh, Cinnabar Bridge. But uh, here we go. What to work on next? So we have a temple, a tavern, offices, because this is a temporary office, uh, a well, or other suggestions that you might have. And for the first iteration of the bridge, I'm just going to have a bridge without, uh, without any, like, lookout for crossbowmen or anything like that, because I don't have any crossbowmen to be able to take advantage of that anyway. And here's the lever, and I'm going to rename this lever um, Main Bridge Lever. So that I know what it does. Hey, a masterpiece wood wheelbarrow. That means my carpenter's probably getting pretty skilled. No, well, still ab adept, but, you know, decent. And the merchants have now departed. So you can see that there's still some stuff left to be hauled away. The bags and bins of leather and the like. Um, that also reminds me, let's make bags. So I'm going to make leather bags until I have 20. Or ten, rather. So, bags, barrels, bins, um, those are sort of your main storage. Again, if it could be made out of stone, do it out of stone. So, like, instead of wood tables, do rock ones. Instead of wood chairs, do rock thrones. Instead of wooden doors, do rock doors. Instead of wooden barrels, it's sometimes really good to do rock pots. But right now, my the station that I make rock pots is making shell gems and they're busy um instead of uh wooden chests make rock coffers oh that's something else i should do so let's cue that up rock coffer make out of shale and then make 10 of them that's just like a chest and they're sometimes needed for taverns and hospitals and things like that and um and temples. So in taverns, you store goblets to drink out of in your coffers or chests. For hospitals, you store your medicine stuff like casts, splints, etc. in the chests. And then for temples, you store uh, instruments for performers to play in those coffers or chests. Ten is probably more than I need, but it's made out of stone. It's made out of rock, so it doesn't really matter if I make too many. Can you run out of things to fish? No, the game kind of, like, generates stuff. Even in the ponds. Like, you can run out of, like, individual little ponds. Right now, for instance, this fisher dwarf is uh, fishing this pond. And as long as there's material in this pond, as long as there's, like, pond turtles to pull out of this pond, he'll farm here, or fish here, because I have it as a preferred zone. But, um, let me change this just to demonstrate. So I'm going to say the preferred fishing area is going to be this brook now. Name it Fishing Brook. And we'll see the Fisher Dwarf, as soon as he is done uh, fishing the pond, will move up to the brook and we'll start fishing up potentially different things from the brook rather than the turtles. Maybe um, mussels or something. Some sort of aquatic edible. Move the Cinnabar. So it looks like Build a Well is going to win. 
So I am going to queue up a dig to get over to where I want the main mining shaft over here. So six, let me measure this out again to make sure I measured it cor correctly. So I'm gonna do one, then three, six, nine, one mining shafts. Yeah, I can see the old ones that hadn't been measured correctly. Delete them. So this is where our main mining area is going to be. And it's, uh, I'm leaving enough space so I can put a drawbridge in there too. I don't suspect that there's going to be like a forgotten beast that raids me from the underneath early on. That, that'd be pretty unusual. But you definitely want protection from the underground as well as the overground. What is everyone working on? So my stone worker doesn't have work because they finished smoothing the uh, this area here. But what we'll start to see is um, people, st yeah, uh, like this guy, Onal, was very happy that he ate in a, a very good dining room. So the fact that I took the effort to smooth this out uh, makes them quite happy. And as you can see, the average happiness of this colony is pretty good. Six that are a little above, eight that are average, one that is a little below. So the net happiness is positive, in other words. So let's build a well. Current priority. And build a well. Uh, so one thing I'm going to need for a well is buckets. So let's get some buckets. You also need buckets to, like, milk animals and the like. I don't know how many milkable animals I have, but it would... I should check that. I'm surprised I haven't yet. So I'm going to do, uh, let's say, five wooden buckets. But I am being warned that my logs are not greater than 10, so that means that my wood stocks are bad. Yeah, they're bad. And uh, my woodcutters are going to get fired. Or slaughtered. Alright, so you... No, you... Mr. New Immigrant, uh, start cutting wood, please. Because I have plenty of pine trees queued up to be cut, and he's just lazy. He's currently constructing a building, so I'll give him credit where credit is due. He's at least doing stuff. Uh, so if I wanted to milk those animals, uh, let me set up a farming workshop. And that will allow me to shear animals, milk animals, etc. Um, do I have any animals to milk? Not really. Yeah, maybe... No. The random animals I got here aren't, like, terrific. Um, some, sometimes you start off with, like, yaks and cows, and I've even had, like, a war elephant at the start, which is pretty baller. You like Yoda and his little red jumper? <laughs> he's happy and he's comfy. Oh, good. No one's even unhappy now. I am, uh, I'm apparently doing a good job. Oh, I'm getting the temple going. Ah, oh, damn. I didn't know. That's a set to a five. Why aren't we mining here first? Where are we mining? Let me check that. Labor. Miners. Only mine. And then I'll... I should start to see them here. Because the well is kind of important. I'll set this to a two. And start working this task. Bins are done, and I might actually have more animals than I have assigned to the, my pasture, so let me double check that. Yeah, I did have a random alpaca uh, sort of domesticate on its own. So it's smart to check. It also reminded me that I need to paint a general meeting area. So the purpose of a general meeting area, I'm going to call it Grand Hall is um, pets that don't have pastures kind of go here as a as a reminder that you're an, an effective manager of the game. <laughs> so it is, it is definitely helpful to, to have that little reminder. And here comes my Grand Master Miner. 
not quite legendary yet, uh, to start digging that uh, tunnel. I don't know how low I have to go, uh, but I do know that I'll have to probably descend to, I'm guessing, elevation like 10 or so. It really depends on what the caverns look like underneath. I am also, for my own benefit, uh, going to have a close bottleneck here in case I need to wall it up in an emergency. So that all I need to do is put down one wall to stay protected until I have the manpower to build a drawbridge. And it looks like uh, this carpenter right now is building the rough cinnabar bridge that will eventually be the only way in to our, uh, our fortress. Down we go. Ooh, gypsum. So that's good for plaster powders and the like. And quick lime, I think. Bauxite, colonite, claystone. All right, let's keep going down. We didn't go down far enough. Go down to elevation 20. And. Probably this bridge will be done today. And then all I really need to do is to make sure that I remove some of... Once the bridge is built, I need to link it to the lever. So I can pull the lever and the bridge rages. And then I need to remove um, the ground that I've been using as a temporary walkway. So that there's no way to pass this bridge when it's in its upstate. Look at that mess. Oh, there we go. I found an expansive cavern. So that probably... Yep, you can start to see... You know, let me turn off the... You can start to see the underground cavern that I just poked into. And what I am looking for... There it is, is water. So there's water at elevation 20, uh, kind of in the middle of the map. So in order to make that um, wellable, you need a vertical shaft, much like in the real world, all the way down to that level. That means at elevation 22, I need to dig this out all the way up. So if I was to have a well, the only issue with this location here, let's say right here. Where is this on the surface? My well would be around this spot. It's not ideal, uh, but it's definitely workable because it's it's it doesn't uh, interfere with my entryway. So the way I'm gonna do this is um, uh, for aesthetics, Let's go ahead and dig, what is this spot? That's not bad. Maybe I'll do two well, I'll do a two well system. So I'll dig stairs here, all the way down. And then next to the stairs, I will dig two holes on either side for two wells. And then for me to get here, uh, let me lay out, oops, let me uh, mimic what I have over here. So I have two work spots and then a two wide hallway. So here's two work spots and I will do a two wide hallway. And this two wide hallway will then hook over there to this area where I have my wells. And I'm setting up at seven, but I'm gonna change that. I just didn't want to dig this whole thing out. So there we go. Let's put this to put one narrow path to two. 
And then also another way I did this is I dug in a way that uh, the stairs sort of exits over water, which means it's not, it's, it's very likely that uh, this stairwell can't be used by enemies because it, there's no way to climb into the stairs from underground. All right, so let's stop our uh, our tunneler here. Okay, that is that's fine. Oh, limestone. So this is a uh, more flux stone. So I have limestone. I have dolonite. I don't think I found shock, but yeah, we have a lot of flux stone too. So now what I could do, because I don't have the drawbridge to protect this yet, is um, because I actually don't need to go down there for the well anymore. I'm just going to wall this off with jet so that nothing from the... Where are you going? Oh, you're hauling gems. Nothing from the underneath um, can come up to bite me yet. And then down here, I don't see an abundance of... Like, that's a dead cave swallow. I don't see, like, a lot of um, critters that could do me harm. But every now and then, you'll have, like, swarms of, like, troglodytes that you know, are going to be a problem or something like that, right? So you, you got to be careful when you dig into the caverns to make sure that your people don't go down there without a military. Because you're going to have a bad time. Nope, not there. I lied. And now I'm just uh, polishing, finishing touches of the um, of the dr entryway drawbridge. I think uh, what I will do is constructions, fortifications. Here out of shale, here out of shale. And construction's wall in this corner and this corner. The idea eventually is to be able to dig out the stone here and be able to shoot out to anyone on the bridge uh, once, once the project's done. All right, so there's the bridge, and I'm going to name this... Um, main bridge this just helps to label your bridges so that when you link them you can see what they are if you have multiple and then it takes a, a mechanism to be able to link those two together and once it's linked and i can say hey do it now once it's linked then we can pull the lever and the bridge retracts and uh thou shall not pass all right so the bridge is linked and you can tell it's linked by show oh no it's not linked i lied I guess that dude was just hauling something. I don't know what he was doing. Okay, he's linking it now. So yeah, show linked to the main bridge. And then if I pull the lever, I need to make sure that when I pull the lever, no one's standing on it. Uh-oh. He's going to go in for a bit of a doozy. There you go. He's now injured because he was standing on it. Shows that it works. And the bridge is retracted and uh, Mr. Wheelbarrow here is shaken to the core with, uh, with a bit of a doozy wound there. Could have been worse. You know, you can, you can make your, um, your drawbridges as deep as you want. One of the ways that if, if I wanted to spend the time to design a burrow, which I haven't done yet, I could have forced him not to be in the way but there we go bridge is back uh and hopefully missed him uh forgives me missed him fury merchants lovely name all right yeah so i was right uh there's no access to this so next uh i am going to channel for the wells so that there are two empty columns, which upon I can build. Zelik, thank you for the resub. Did 
This miner's like, ah, I'm busy. So here we go. Yep, straight to water. There's no way that uh, anyone can use these stairs to access my home. Um, then go over to fluid machines, wells, and I don't have blocks, so let's carve some blocks. Make rock block. Make rock block out of shale. And just repeat. And let's give this an emergency. It's still late autumn. Nothing's frozen yet. Uh, but it's 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 helpful to have well water in case I run out of drink. Drinking water uh, deeply, deeply, deeply upsets dwarves, but at least they won't die when they, uh, drinking water is available. They just won't be happy at all <laughs> with your choices in life. Understandably. Alright, so once there's some blocks made... There we go, I already have some blocks. Build. Well, number one. With a bucket. And a rope. And a mechanism. And... Hey, I thought you made more blocks than that. Now let's go back to that. Make more blocks. Need access to chain. Did we use up all the chains? Rope. Oh, you know, that one... We'll see how much rope I have once they're done. I think we used up all the rope. And I don't have the capacity to make rope at the moment. Because I don't have the right workshops. So, that will need to be remedied. But at least the well is almost done, actually. Well is operational. So if they're... The, the caveat here is... Um, there's a few things. One, uh, if you go down to the cavern, there's a chance that the cave here can spawn, um, like, tree fungus. Like this stuff. Funga wood, which is subterranean mushroom trees, and block access to the well, which is annoying because it's really, really, really difficult to cut down a tree that's growing in the middle of a deep water. Um, so you have to be careful with that. Uh, so one thing I would advise, and I've done it in this case, is I've made my wells right next to uh, a cliffside so that I can create a stairwell and access the the tree if there was to be a tree grown in that spot because it would otherwise block me so it's these two spots here uh as you can see there's a pile of discarded um channeling material the shale and box and all that garbage but um these two spots here are where the buckets would dip down so they need to be clear because if if there's any, ever anything blocking it like a constructed floor or a tree or something um the well won't work so, well is operational means it's working. And how much rope do I have left? No, I have more rope. Why did it... Uh, it should be fine. Oh, yeah. There it goes. I don't... I think he was... There, someone was mucking with the ropes and I wasn't able to use them. All right. So, two wells. And why two? Uh, just in case, one, one of the reasons to do it is if you have a lot of people that are injured... You, t in order to clean the injuries, you need well water. You need clean water, not like murky, muddy water. So having multiple wells uh, gives you the ability to just deal with like um, a sudden influx. And then also this well room that I have here, if I needed to, I could dig out additional wells following this subterranean river um, to put in a lot more wells if I need the capacity. But I think two wells at the start is probably pretty good. Uh, let me show you burrows. So I'm about to wall off the mine for now so that nothing in the cavern can come messing with me. It might not even be aggressive messing. I just don't want them to 
unburrow and, uh, you know, and then have me have to like fight them or eat, you know, whatever, have them eat my stuff, whatever, whatever it is. So what a burrow is, is it's sort of like an area designated for your people to head to in the case of an emergency. So here it will say their work and living areas where citizens can be assigned and they're limited and confined to the area of the borough and it can be suspended where they can be free to move around. It's a really good like, oh no, we're under attack button. So the way to do this is you just paint the borough. Um, I'm just going to paint crudely. Oh God, that's a hard color to look at. So the burrow will just, I'll make it look like pants. <laughs> and you just paint the burrow where it's safe. So in this case, I'm going to paint um, up to, but not including the mining cavern. And then don't forget to paint extra Z levels because it only applies to the Z level you're currently on. So also add the stockpile. And this is a temporary burrow to be updated. And then I'm also going to paint the uh, the mining area as well. Or the uh, farming area, rather. And that's that's my burrow. And then if I wanted to draft everyone except for one constructor to the burrow, all I would need to do is... Starting burrow. All I would need to do is to assign them all. Boom. Done. 15 out of 15 assigned. And then to have one person, let's say my expedition leader, not assigned to the burrow. So that the expedition leader can leave. And then... If the pause button is illuminated, it means it's suspended and they, they're free to leave the burrow. And if it's unpaused, it means they're restrict, zone restricted. And then you can also toggle whether workshops can source materials from outside the burrow. And I'm going to say, no, don't go into the mining cavern because I'm about to wall it off. That's kind of the idea. So now uh, I'm going to go back to work detail. This is going to be another temp one. It's going to be wall and floor construction. Call it temp. I'm so creative. Give it to the expedition leader and lock them to it. And then the expedition leader is going to be required to build walls and floors. And then everybody else will not be allowed to leave the burrow. So the walls and floors that they build will probably be these here. And I can suspend it so that they don't spend time on that. And this wall here blocking access to the cavern and this is it's probably it's probably entirely safe to leave access to this cavern i just i, I want to preface it's probably not going to be a problem to have this it doesn't look that deep it doesn't look filled with creatures like it has some birds it's not a big deal but this is just an abundance of caution because i do not have an escape bridge i don't have a drawbridge to prevent access so it's i'm just being extra careful uh, so where are you? Oh, you're eating. Uh, uh, did I not make that your office? You're eating in your office. Okay. And one thing you'll notice is nobody will step foot outside the bounds here. So, up oh, there she is. And it's walled. Alright, then I can go over to the burrow and suspend it because no longer can anyone get to the potentially dangerous area. I'm not saying it's dangerous, but the potentially unexplored, unsecured area, especially given that I do not have a military. Because it's entirely possible that there's something lurking down here that I haven't spotted, or, or something could spawn down here, and I don't have a means to quickly react to that, uh, to that event. So, I'm just being extra cautious so that I don't have to save, save scum or anything like that. Uh, let's do... Shell blocks. A very pretty temple. Uh, what do you want me to work on next? There you go. I'm going to get a general temple. Um, 
I'm going to set up like the basics of a temple, but um, voting for a temple has me work more on it. The other thing I'm going to have to be cognizant of is we do have this stairwell up to the farm. So I'm going to want to avoid that and not incorporate it into my temple if I don't want it. It would be ugly. So I am going to add a metalsmith uh, here. No. Here. I need access to a fire safe anvil. There's no way I don't have one. Where are you? Oh, it's outside. But you are burrow. Re oh, you're burrow restricted or unrestricted. In fact, nobody's assigned to the burrow. Go get that anvil. Is someone currently hauling it or something? What, what, what are these guys doing? <laughs> Without a tavern, it's sacrilege. I don't necessarily disagree. Looks like that's going to be the popular option. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure why they haven't just walked over here for the anvil. Well, that's part of being new. Now, let's try this again. Really? All right, I think they just need to haul it. And they're being annoying about that. Well, that mining got done fast. Uh, so it looks like Tavern is going to win. I'm just going to start prepping ahead of time. So, likewise with this being a 369 with platforms for, um, in fact, I am going to just designate where the bridges are going to be built so that it's easily visualizable. So it's the bridge platform, 369, the bridge platform, and then the entrance to the tavern. So then the tavern is going to be in this area here. And I want the tavern on a bridge as well, just so that in the case of an emergency, we can uh, isolate it, you know, without, uh, without having to work too hard. BB, thank you for the, the resub. Cheers. And I should finish off the drawbridge, too. Oops. They definitely got the wells done. But that drawbridge is still TBD. And good. Both of these are operational. In fact, this bucket is full. Full of water. Alright, so just to make it easier to visualize... Again, bridge platform here, the end of the bridge platform there, and then the start of the tavern with this being the door. So some things about a tavern um, in terms of design. One, you probably need a large open area, ideally in the center, but it could be anywhere, as a dance floor. This is uh, so that they can party and revelry and all that jazz. So an open middle area is kind of ideal. Uh, two, it's one chair per table, and each patron who wants to drink has to have their own throne or chair and table. So you want to design it so that it can have aesthetics for chairs and tables that are not shared with anyone. And then three, you want a spot to hold your alcohol. Um, so a designated area, a bar area, if you will, where the alcohol will be stored in stockpiles in barrels. Um, that could be anywhere. Could be in the back, could be in the front, doesn't really matter. Four, you're going to want a coffer or chest to hold mugs. 
uh, goblets to drink out of. And then five, you can also have it open to visitors so it can be attached to a dormitory so that people that are not of your colony, not of your fortress, can visit, share news of the world, gossip, um, whatever, and then sleep in that dorm as a visitor. So those are sort of the design concept of a tavern. And also you can put in artifacts to spruce it up and make it look nice or uh, whatever. So let me try to plan this out. Uh, let's see. I don't like... Uh, I'm not going to go too far west or east. Because I, I this is eventually going to be where the barracks are. So I'm going to paint it in sevens and then repaint over it. So I think what I'm going to do is something like this. I'm going to have um, nested areas for people to drink in that are sort of set away from the, the center. Uh, so that it's like... Um, their own private tables, their own private drinking tables, as as dwarves like to do. So we'll do a few of these. Mm. I'm not going to have it be overly huge, though, but I, I'll go big. I'll go big-ish. So that uh, I don't need to redesign it sometime in the future. And also it will yield, it will likely yield material that I can use to make things look nice. That's also in no way symmetrical, is it? <laughs> How is this the middle point? And where where I go wrong? Oh, I see. Alright. So these are the individual booths. I know it's probably very difficult for you to visualize it. Um, we have the center here. I think what I'll do is I will have pillars, just because it will look cool, in the corners here. It will look kind of dwarven style, I think. And I'll likely excavate the pillars and then build them out of actual stone blocks, because I, I, I want to have a tavern that I'm proud of. And then in the back, um, in the back I will have a, an area where the beer is stored that is sort of separate. So people can come back here for their beers so it's not just out on the floor. You know, civilized. I put in air quotes. Tavern kind of looks like a butterfly at this point. Maybe I'll uh, change the design. I'll have the, the beer acquisition closer to the entryway so it's shorter to haul. So I'm going to change the way this is laid out down here and have the recessed beer in cubby holes uh, like this. So we'll have the beer stored in these areas. And then up here, uh, this will be where the dorm is, where people can sleep. It will look it doesn't need to be large, but it will look something like that. All right, good enough. Uh, let's start digging it out. I'm going to set the digs to a three. And this is going to be a lot of smoothing. Um, smooth floor is not as valuable as built floor. Smooth walls are not as valuable as built walls. First iteration of this tavern is definitely going to be smooth, not built because building requires so much more planning and materials and work um, that I am not going to cop to that immediately. I'm also not going to include the dorm on the first iteration, I think. Uh, we're going to go tavern only, and I'll add the dorm afterwards. So current project is build the entr uh, entrance drawbridge and build a tavern. The door to it. So you can sort of see how this is starting to get laid out. Um, 
where we have the main entryway. And now that the now that this is constructed, I can start peeling it away so that this bridge is actually functional. And I'm going to set this as a one because it's kind of more urgent than the tavern itself. Now, when we lift the bridge, there is a nine long, three deep hole, and nobody will be able to traverse that. And I have these um, shale block fortifications in there in the future, so that if I excavate the material around the bridge, we can station crossbowmen to fire on anyone that is trying to mess with me. Pretty functional. Very, very cheap. P pretty functional. Um, and yeah, we can pull the lever whenever we need. And uh, I do intend to have a second bridge here, as I mentioned really early on the stream, as like a burrow bridge. The concept is my military is stationed in this section. Here, let me zoom out. My military is stationed here. This is the main bridge. This is trade. And then this is the mining shafts. So we'll have a mining shaft bridge. We'll have a tavern bridge. We'll have a burrow bridge. So when there's an emergency and I want to issue a burrow command, the burrow is actually going to be only in this area behind the burrow bridge. So everybody retreats beyond the burrow bridge and I can pull the main bridge first. And then once I think everybody is in the burrow, I can pull the burrow bridge afterwards and it gives me time to get there while my military slows down or kills the, uh, the, the incoming enemies. And then also, um, I would be able to, if I did pull this in time, I'd be able to just fire on anyone that is in my entry ramp way, coming from the outside. And at some point uh, in the future, I will build fortifications outside as well. But I don't, I don't have need of them anytime soon. So that's a that's a low priority. Just cut. Whoa, Jesus! Need logs, 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 logs. Yeah, that's all logs. My woodcutters, what the heck are you guys doing? Or what aren't you? I know what you're not doing. Carpenter, only woodcut. You know what? I think I know what's going on. Yeah, I know what's going on. This is my fault, actually. I shouldn't blame them. I built a floor here, and I can't have it there. I, like, messed up my own... Uh, that's why I couldn't access the anvil. Um, wait, that was down. Oops, no, no, don't do that. I was trying to clean up uh, an accidental channeling that I did and made it significantly worse. Do I have access up here now? Because this child, I think, has been locked out. No, maybe not. So let me turn on ramps. Okay, yeah. There's an issue with the ramps. Uh, yep, yeah, alright. So I need to build a ramp. That's what I need. Construction ramp here out of shale. Also, quit making the blocks. I don't need that many blocks. Nothing like locking a 16-year-old outdoors <laughs> uh, uh, completely accidentally, right? Totally normal to our fortress things. And that's why I couldn't get access to the, uh, to the anvil. Because I broke it. Do I need to force... Yeah, let me force construct for a minute to force the uh, happy to, to build that. And even just one ramp is going to be enough. Yeah, okay, that works. Even the one ramp is going to be enough, not for wagons, but for us to be able to walk. 
So now uh, I should be able to make a metal smith. Yeah, there it is. No problem. Problem solving. Don't block off. And, and that's actually how easy it is to completely block off access to the surface. Just like one accidental floor and oops, no more access. So uh, the smoother, the engraver that I have, I'm going to start to smooth out. As I said, the first iteration of this tavern is just going to be a smooth one. So let's go over and I don't know why you don't have a face, but I'm going to lock you to that task. And uh, the legendary miner just hit legendary. I'm going to actually raffle off a second character. This one is not going to be for the miner, though. It's going to be for the legendary weaponsmith. So good luck to those in the chat that are subscribers and want to have the weaponsmith named after you. And we should also probably see the, uh, the stuff being hauled away. So it's very, very hard to tell because of where the smooth is. In fact, let me high priority smooth out this area so that I can actually physically see it. But this is where I'm going to store the beer and here as well. So I'm going to smooth these spots first so I can start to stock my drinks there. Cheers. And Captain Hindsight, thank you for the sub. So it was pretty quick to excavate the tavern. It's going to be a little bit longer to... Uh, to make sure that it is uh, smooth and nice or whatever. And then the Metalsmith Forge is going to be for um, some of the metals that we have. So actually, let's take a look at that. Oh, what am I looking at? Uh, so in terms of bars, we only have charcoal. And that, that also explains why we didn't have any um, wood, because they physically couldn't get up there. But our logs should be... Yeah, okay, 147. So that's a pretty good reminder to not lock my woodcutters to woodcut so that they can carpenter or whatever they want. Um, Fisher Dwarf, I'm going to have locked. I might need a brewer soon for someone dedicated to stay on the still, but for now, I'm just going to queue up a repeating brew drink from Fruit. And then let's also take a quick look at uh, that. So for drinks... Don't use my alcohol in cooking. And... But you can use these non-cave seeds for cooking. And don't... Anything that can't be brewed can be cooked. But anything that... Um, like persimmons and, and plump helmets only used for brewing. Alright, that looks right. Alright, so now the, the spot for the tavern alcohol is there, and I'm going to do a stockpile here. Tavern booze. Very creative. So, in food, go to drink plant. Uh, I don't have any animal drink, like I don't have beehives yet. But uh, So it's just going to be drink plants, and these are all the alcohols that you can get. Uh, and we're going to uh, put them in the tavern booze, which means down here I'm going to remove them. This is why I find it really particularly useful to only have one overflow stockpile so that you don't have to go to each individual stockpile and like mess with them because that's annoying. Here I can just be like, hey, look, this one stockpile, boom, done. And now everybody's going to carry the alcohol from the stockpile to the tavern uh, once they're freed up. The other thing I'm probably going to want to do is to make the tavern so that uh, people can actually drink here. So what is going to be required for that is a few things. Uh, one, I did mention it needs a coffer. I'm going to put the coffer right at the door. And that's going to hold the mugs to drink out of. Eventually, maybe we'll make like silver goblets or whatever. But for starter, mugs. And then we're also going to want uh, tables and chairs. 
So it's uh, it's not going to be symmetrical initially, but eventually it will be. I'll just, for now, do six. That's probably going to be enough. So that's six tables and six thrones. Done. And that's it. That's kind of it. That's all you really need to do. Uh, and then have a wide open space for dancing. It's pretty straightforward. And the nicer you can make it look, and the more smooth you can make it look, uh, the better that it's going to be utilized. So this space now, I'm going to do a one smooth... Well, here, let me add booze to the other side. And unlike RimWorld, um, uh, stockpiles don't have to be contiguous. Hey, Kathanon, congratulations. You are a legendary craftsman. A weaponsmith in this case. That's uh just like just like Rimworld, right? Just like Rimworld. Where are you? Kib. Kib, kib, kib. Perfect. Thank you for tuning in to Dwarf Fortress Taming the Wilds, which originally streamed live on Twitch December 27th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. But please keep in mind that I'm a relatively new player, and I'd like to learn at my own pace. If you'd like to join a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has a link to Twitch, as well as my stream schedule. If you'd like to join my gaming community, Rodamont.com also has a link to Discord, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you, that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Farewell, my fellow dwarves.